हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम आरती मैम इज विथ यू टू स्टार्ट द न्यू चैप्टर नेम इज हेरिडिटी एंड इवोल्यूशन सो दिस इज द लेक्चर नंबर वन ऑफ द चैप्टर हेरिडिटी एंड इवोल्यूशन सो एक्चुअली स्टूडेंट्स टिल नाउ वी हैव रेड अबाउट मेनी लाइफ प्रोसेसेस व्हिच अकर इन अ ह्यूमन बॉडी वी लर्न अबाउट न्यूट्रिशन डाइजेशन इवन वी लर्न अबाउट हाउ डू ऑर्गेनिजम्स रिप्रोड्यूस E, we have learned in the last past lectures that how a newborn baby take birth by the fusion of the two gametes but how did we came to know about this thing is studied under this chapter okay how different scientists contribute towards our studies that a human has taken birth on this planet before human who were the organisms who were existing on our planet like some microorganisms like some bacteria okay many organisms which were existing on our planets were known to occur as non living organisms but if we talk about many organisms which are on our planet nowadays are considered under the living organisms now this is a journey of a planet from where the non living organisms got converted into living organisms as well okay different scientists gave their hypothetical advancements that how a uh, non living things like methane like carbon dioxide oxygen even hydrogen all these elements combination the molecules and even compounds existed on our earth surface and because of which the life was made possible on our planet so many scientists have their contributions toward this thing nextly in this chapter we are going to learn about this thing also that what are hereditical features okay what is heredity and what is evolution which we are going to learn about in this chapter actually i want to make you introduce about all the terms related to this chapter in this lecture number 1 actually what is heredity you can see that some diseases are being transferred from the parents to offspring as well okay if a person is suffering from the disease aids then this will be carried on to the next generation if a person is suffering from the disease like thyroid like blood pressure and if he or she has suffered from the disease called diabetes mellitus then it will be transferred to their offspring as well why because the gene has developed inside their body which is transferred to their offspring okay so what happens students the transfer of any kind of characters or traits from a parent to the offspring is considered under the category of heredity okay now what is evolution student actually evolution is what are the different mutations that can have occur inside a gene what are the new characters which have been developed inside the gene actually there are two types of variations which can be seen in a human body first is the somatic variation and second one is genetic variation somatic variations are those variations which have been developed because of the presence of external environment around us okay if a child is taking birth in the area where there is too much of cold then his skin will be according to that place but if a child is taking birth in the area where the temperatures are even higher like in kerala or we move towards the areas like telangana pondicherry so you can see the people have dark skin tone why this is so because of more amount of temperatures so you can see this thing that the somatic characters can be developed because of the presence of external environment and they remains inside the person's body only they are not inherited to the offspring but if we talk about genetic variation if a gene has been variated if a gene has been mutated then this will get transferred from the parent towards the offspring and this offspring will carry on further towards another offspring so this is how the heredity is carried out in a family okay you have seen this thing in your family as well if your mother or father is having curly hairs then you will also have curly hairs and you will give birth to a child who is also having curly hair so it is a gene which is being transferred from the parent towards the offspring then this offspring will become parent one day and then it will be transferred to the another generation so it is just the transfer of the genes from one generation to another and this is so on the pedigree will be carried out so who were the scientists who made the contribution in telling that how the hereditary can occur how the evolution can occur okay actually 
अर्थ इज अ प्लैनेट ऑन विच द लाइफ इज मेड पॉसिबल नो अदर प्लैनेट ऑन द सोलर सिस्टम इज प्रेजेंट वेयर द लाइफ इज मेड पॉसिबल बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन ऑन द अर्थ द लाइफ इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज ह्यूमन बींग्स नीड ऑक्सीजन टू सर्वाइव एंड इवन प्लांट्स नीड ऑक्सीजन फॉर रेस्पिरेशन प्रोसेस नाउ actually earth has life because of this only the evolution has occur and because of evolution some different kinds of gases which have been developed inside our atmosphere contains the main gas for respiratory procedure that is oxygen so we are going to learn about all these thing that how scientists contributed through their experiments in continuing the studies about heredity and evolution and how do we came to know about this thing that the gene is being transferred from one generation to another generation so firstly we will make introduce about all the things in this chapter and nextly we will talk about that how the different kind of crosses like mono hybrid and di hybrid crosses takes place how the mendel contribution helped us to study about this chapter okay students so let us see first the content portion of today's lecture so the content portion of today's lecture is first is introduction so i will give a very brief introduction about this chapter next is heredity and variation what is heredity and how the genes are becoming variated okay what are the changes in the genes can be seen and the last part we are going to talk about is the mendel's experiment mendel has done so many experiment and because of his experiment only we are able to study this complicated topic this topic is made easy by the contribution of mendel because he have given certain laws also which is being applied on different organisms and they are true also they are proved to be true also okay students now students we are moving towards the introductory part of this chapter so let us talk about the introduction part in which we are going to be made familiar by different kind of terms which i am going to use very closely in each and every line okay so we are going to understand each and every term that is very very important for this chapter so first point is a recognizable feature of a human being or any other organism like height complexion shape of hair color of eyes and shape of nose and chin are called as characters or traits so actually if you see the person physically so you are ready to write some points about them like if you see myself okay now students we are on the introductory part of this chapter so we are going to see that how are the changes which are carried out by the human being and what are the physiological and the genetic changes through which we can recognize a person okay students so let us see the first point so first point is a recognizable feature of human being or any other organism like height complexion shape of hair color of eyes and shape of nose and chin are called the characters or the traits okay so if you observe a person carefully then you can see this thing that what is the color of hair okay what is the color of skin the height of the person okay the height of the person we can observe very very clearly next if we see the color of the eyes and shape of the nose and chin so these all are known as normally characters but in scientific terms we call it as traits okay now next the transmission of characters from the parents to their offspring is called as what heredity actually all the characters are being transferred from the parents towards the offspring but some of the characters get activated and can be seen clearly in a person okay if i am having brown eyes because my father has transferred a gene of brown eyes inside me so brown eyes can be observed inside me even my brother has brown eyes as well okay my father and mother complexion is fair so my complexion my brother's complexion is also fair so these kind of characters can be seen which are transferred from a parent towards the offspring next point in most simple terms heredity means continuity of the features from one generation to the next generation so what are the features which can be continued from one generation to next generation these are all these sort of type of characters like the height of a person the complexion of a person hair color eye color 
all these are transferred from one generation to another generation because the parents are carrying the gene of all these traits okay students now the reproduction of organisms produces variations so uh, the reproduction actually it is responsible for producing the variation in a person okay next the variation produced in organisms during successive generations get accumulated in the organism actually what does a variation mean variation means the changes which have been occurred during a period of time okay now what happens when the variations are produced in a single organism during successive generations they get accumulated in the organisms okay now what happens if a person is having blue eyes the blue eye gene will get transferred in their offspring now the offspring will also get blue eye but one day they will also become parent then they will transfer this gene of blue eye towards the next generation and this is so on the genes are being carried out from one generation to the next generation now what happens student if a parent is having straight hair or curly hair then this gene is transferred to the offspring but offspring does not develop the character of curly hair or straight hair then this gene will get stopped over here the gene will get variated and this variated gene will get transferred to the offspring okay students so this is how the cycle goes on next the significance of variation shows up only if continues to be inherited by the offspring for several generations now as i told you the example of blue eye the blue eye will get continued from one generation to next and from next to next and this is so on the gene is carried out and this is known as heredity okay it is transferred from one generation to the another generation next evolution is a kind of gradual unfolding of the new organisms from pre existing primitive organism through slow and steady changes because of some environmental factors and even the surroundings in which a person is living some kind of new characters get developed inside the person's body and because of which some somatic and genetic changes occurs in the body and these changes occurs by the time in a person's body so they are known as what evolution actually we saw this thing that if we talk about the early men okay they do not have developed total brain okay they use all the things which are nearby them but now the brain has been developed of a person they are running through the technologies okay so why this is so because the brain has developed the brain has evolved okay now this is so because there are so many variations which are occurring inside the gene of a person and because of the variation the evolution takes place okay next point we can now define evolution as follows evolution is the sequence of gradual changes which take place in primitive organisms over millions of years in which new species are produced okay so what happens we can define evolution as follows now evolution is sequence of gradual changes now what are the gradual changes which can occur in a human being so you can see this diagram over here okay so the human being have been evolved from this organism okay they have bent structure they were short heighted lot of hairs on their body but if you see the organism which have been developed from this they do not have bent structure they have a straight posture in their body they do not have more amount of hairs on their body and even the face shape has also been changed okay so this is how the evolution is a sequence of gradual changes which take place in primitive organism over millions of year actually it takes a lot of amount of time the evolution is occurring because of the variation is gene so variation in gene even take a lot of amount of time it does not occur from a single one to two generations only it can occur from 100 to 200 generations okay so it takes millions of years to become variated okay now students we are starting with the topic heredity and evolution first we will talk about what is heredity and secondly we will talk about what is evolution okay so we are going to see the definition of heredity actually it includes those traits or characters which are transmitted from 
generation to generation and therefore fixed for a particular individual okay so actually these are the traits or the characters which are fixed for a particular individual and will be transmitted from the one generation to the next generation you must have been hearing about this term that the problem if you it is in your body that is a hereditical problem now why we are using the hereditical problem word over here because it has been transferred from the parent towards you okay if i am having specs i will say this is a hereditical problem because in my father the gene has been developed of this so it has been transferred from my parent to me okay now next we are going to talk about genetics what is genetics students study of heredity and variation is said to be known as genetics the term genetics was first of all used by w bateson in 1905 okay so if we talk about genetics what is genetics it is the study of heredity and variation remember this term okay and it is said to be known as what genetics uh, the first scientist who used this term was w bates in 1905 remember this thing because sometimes question can arise from this part as well now an austrian monk named as gregor john mendel was the first person to study the genetics so Gregor John Mendel put his experiment and he told about the genetics what is genetics how gene from a parent is being transferred inside the child now this is not sure that the gene will become activated or not if it does not get the favorable condition the gene will not become activated if it get the favorable environment to get activated then only it will get activated inside the person's body he was therefore regarded as the father of genetics so remember the word father of genetics for grigor john mendel okay g h mendel also we can say this thing so next we are going to talk about variation so variation is concerned with difference between the individuals of same species and also between the offspring of the same parents okay so individuals of same species means that if we consider that we are homo sapiens so now we are developing new new characters each and every day and we are transferring these characters also to our offspring as well so it is the variation between that same individuals and the also between the offspring of the same parents okay so offspring of the same parents like we are the two children of our parents students so now parents have transferred genes to us so we are having certain characteristics of our mother as well as our father okay so why we are carrying this because we have got the genes from our mother as well as father so these characters or traits can be visualized by physiological methods okay next variations could be of two types okay so what are the two types of variations which can be seen so first one is the somatic variation okay now somatic variation do not have any comparison with the genetic variation because it is with the physical means okay any physiological change which occur inside the human body is known as somatic variation okay next germinal variation germinal variation means the variation which has occurred in the germ cell that is the gene of an organism okay now how the germ cell will get developed how the gene will be formed okay the gene will be get developed we are going to study about this thing in germinal variation now this germinal variation can get transferred from one parent to another offspring but if we talk about somatic variation students it does not get transferred okay it depends upon the type of environment you are living like i am living in an environment where i read too much i gain knowledge too much i give all the knowledge to you okay so i am developing these characteristics only somatically when i will die they will also die okay they are not transferred to my children but if i am having curly hairs i have fair color i have brown eyes okay i am having the difficulty in seeing so i am having specs so all these characters will get transferred to my children as well so they are counted under the germinal variation but if we talk about somatic variation they are only physical changes which can occur inside the human body and these physical changes can be because of the environment in which a per person is living okay
now we are going to briefly discuss about the two type of variation that is the somatic variation and the genetic variation so first one is somatic variation student so somatic variation affect the somatic cells of an organism so what are somatic cells these are the cells which are not transferred from the parent to the offspring they remain in the body of an individual only okay it is neither inherited from parents nor transmitted to the next generation okay like if i am developing certain kind of characteristics as i told you that i am reading the books more and more so i am gaining knowledge more okay now i am want to give an example over here if there is a doctor okay so doctor has become doctor because he has worked hard okay for fighting the examination then he has done the practice of becoming the doctor and now he is a successful doctor now he will give birth to a child now there is no surety that the child will become doctor or not why because this is just a somatic variation the somatic variation occurs with the person and dies with the person it is not transmitted from one generation to another generation okay next point it is acquired by individual during its own life and is lost with its death okay it is not transferred to the next generation next it is therefore also called as acquired variation it is just acquired variation why because it has been acquired from the external environment now somatic variations are due to now why do somatic variation occurs inside a human body so let us see this thing so first is environment okay if i am living in environment where there are no technologies okay if there i am living in environment where there is too much of cold too much of heat so i will develop my body according to it i will be habitual to that environment okay so this is just a somatic variation which occurs inside the human body so this includes the factor that affect the organism such as food air pressure humidity and water so these are the factors which can regulate the somatic variation in a human being next if we talk about light strong sunlight affect the human skin by increasing the dark pigment melanin in the epidermal cells melanin protects the underlying cells by absorbing the ultraviolet rays of the sun okay so if i am living in an environment where i am exposing towards the sunlight much then i will develop the dark color on my skin because of the melanin pigment which is present under my epidermal layer of the skin okay but if i am living in an environment where there is a cold okay there is not too much of sunlight exposure then i will develop the fair skin why because melanin pigment will be lesser in my skin so this is just the somatic variation which can occur due to the external environment okay now if we talk about habited students it is also affect the genetic makeup of an individual and leads to variation so actually changes in the body person can be seen because of the habitat in which they are living okay if i am living in an environment which is oceany or if i am exposed to the sunlight too much if i am living in the environment which is too dirty so my body will develop to resist all these things and i will develop a habitat to live in that environment only okay now if we talk about nutrition then it is also one of the various factor that cause variation now why because if my body is not getting proper nutrition even i will not be able to develop the characters which has been transferred from my parents why because i am not getting proper nutrition so my body will not develop properly even i can gather some kind of diseases related to lesser nutrition like malnutrition and even the vitamin deficiency diseases as well okay now use and disuse of organs this is very very important if we are not using our organs properly so it is a somatic variation which can be seen in a person so how continuous use of an organ makes it better developed whereas constant disuse make it reduced how if a person is developing the organ continuously if i am uh, using my fore limbs my hind limbs continuously i am walking running doing all my physical works so i will develop the organs completely but if a person is not doing the physical work then these organs will get reduced they will not get developed properly okay so this is also a reason for the somatic variation now next conscious efforts 
Conscious efforts by a man produces somatic variations in humans themselves in domestic animals and plants as well. Okay, now what are the conscious effort? If I am putting a lot of effort towards my studies, okay, I am gaining good marks, I am taking admission in the universities. So this is just a somatic variation. It does not depend on the next incoming generation. Okay, I will not give the gene of this type to my next generation. Okay, students. Now next, if you see here, we are going to talk about the germinal variation. How the germinal variation occur in a human being. So this variation affects the germ cells of an organism and is consequently inheritable. So as I told you about this thing that if I am having blue eyes, if I am having the skin color of hair, if I am having curly hairs, then these type of genes will get inherited to the next generation. Okay. It is received by the individual from the parents and is transmitted to the next generation as well. Okay, students. Now, next point. Significance of the variation. So, what is the significance of the variation? So, let us understand this thing. Variation enables the organisms to adapt themselves to the changing environment. Okay. So, if we are not changing ourselves, we cannot adapt to the environment. Okay. If we are living in a cold country, then we will adapt ourselves to live in such a situation. Okay. We will wear more winter clothes so that we do not feel winter. Okay. So, this is just a somatic variation which can occur. Next, it forms raw material for evolution. Now, why it is forming a raw material for evolution? As the genes are getting variated. Okay. If genes are getting variated, then what will happen students? The changes in the next generation can be seen. Okay. Now, what happens if an example, if I take here, if a person is having blue eyes, okay, this gene has been transferred to the offspring. But offspring does not develop the character of blue eyes. Even it is having the black eye. Now, this gene will get transferred to the offspring which will be produced by it okay and this will have the black eyes okay so this is how the variation can be seen from a particular organism to another individual it enables the organisms to face the struggle for existence in a better way okay so what happens actually when the variations are observed in our environment so it enables a organism to get adjusted in their environment okay so every time our environment is changing and so on the genes are also changing okay next it helps men in improving the races of useful animals and plants actually what happens some of the characteristics or traits are getting developed or we can say they are getting advanced and because of this what is happening it is improving the races okay of useful animals and plants as well next point it is the basis of heredity okay actually what happens if one gene is getting transferred from a parent to the offspring then what is happening student it is forming the basis of heredity now this offspring one day will become a parent and then the gene will be transferred to their offspring so this is how the Heredity is carried on from one generation to another generation means the genes are carried on from a parent to offspring and then again from a parent to offspring. So the genes does not get extinct of these kind of individuals why because they are being transmitted from one generation to the next generation. Okay now it also leads to existence of new traits so new characters also get developed according to the environment which the people are facing okay i told you about the somatic variations also so somatic variations are really important in a person's life why because what happens students the person develop a habit in living in that environment which is favorable for itself and if the environment is not favorable a body develops itself like that so that a person can reside in that environment even they can survive in that harsh conditions as well as we know that the carbon dioxide is increasing on our herd and because of which the global warming is caused now because of global warming the temperature is continuously increasing so we are just 
developing a habit in surviving in these high temperatures okay if our body is not adapted to these high temperature then we will die so certain characters or we can say traits are also being improved from one generation to next generation and this type of variation is very very important okay so these are the significances of the variation okay now we are moving towards the next topic that is mendel's contributions so we are going to learn about that how mendel contributed in telling that how the heredity and evolution on our earth has occurred okay so gregor john mendel in 1822 to 1884 in silesian austria now a part of czechoslovakia he is known as the father of genetics okay so remember this thing students that mendel is known as what the father of genetics why we call as father of genetics because he was the only scientist who put an attempt to solve the mystery behind the evolution and even heredity he told us about that how genes can be transferred from one generation to next generation how the new characters are being developed in a particular human being okay now he conducted his experiments on a garden pea which is known as what pisum sativum okay so this is very very important students remember the name of garden pea which is known as what pisum sativum in scientific name okay pisum sativum is the scientific name of garden pea so mendel contributed to his studies and he studied about the garden pea firstly he conducted all the experiment on this plant mendel presented his experiments data conclusions before brown natural society in 1865 and was published in annual proceedings of the natural history society in 1886 so it was all the work in 18th century so all this work contributed towards the further studies that how evolution took place on earth and how the heredity is carried on okay now his work was recognized in 1900 so his work came to recognition in 1900 but after is that what happened in 1884 he died and by his death no work was then seen by other scientists but after some time new scientists came and saw the work of mendel so mendel's conclusions that is the laws which was given by him were rediscovered simultaneously by hugo de veris a dutch biologist okay hugo de veris was a dutch biologist who saw all the contributions which was given by the mendel Karl Korens a German botanist and Erich von Schemark an Austrian botanist okay so all these were the scientists who saw all the work all the laws which were given by mendel and then mendel work was put into existence in the studies which we are studying till now a date okay so what were the mendel's contributions in the studies so let us see this thing but before seeing the mendel works i will make you familiar with some of the general terms which i will be continuously using in the upcoming lectures as well you are not so familiar with the words like gene like alleles autosomes somatic even all the different types of words like phenotype genotype so i will make you familiar with all these terms so that you do not get confused that why i am speaking these words okay so let us see the general terms or we can say the terminology of this chapter so first word we are going to learn about is gene so what is gene it is a hereditary unit which carries character from one generation to another generation okay so it is the sort of chromosome or we can say a small thing which is carrying from one generation to another generation and showing their characters actually what happens students in a person chromosome are present and in chromosome the dna material is present and in dna the gene is present okay so this is carried from one generation to another generation next we are going to talk about is allele term allele refers to each of the members of genetic pair or alternate trait of gene pair okay so actually if we are making a pair of gene okay if we are using this word xx or we are using the 
chromosomal word xy then we can use the word allele for it okay so it is the member of genetic pair or alternate trait of gene pair so it is a genetic pair and it is a alternate trait of gene pair okay now next is homozygous traits now homozygous traits mean similar type of characters which can be shown so they have similar alleles for specific trait okay so actually we are using the capital t and capital t for tall and small t and small t for dwarf okay now they are homozygous homozygous means similar okay next they produce only one type of gametes so they produce only one type of gametes now next is heterozygous traits so they have dissimilar alleles for a specific trait they produce two types of gametes now how there are two types of gametes you can see here okay now they have dissimilar alleles as well now what happens here student we are representing t and small t but the capital t is dominant over here so we can say that the character will be tall but instead it is having the two type of gamete in its character okay now next dominant trait what is dominant trait the trait which appears in f1 generation is called as what dominant trait actually what happens first filial generation which comes from the cross of the alleles is known as what the f1 generation and if we want to see f1 generation then we will talk all these thing about in the next lecture but i am just giving you an overview over here that if we talk about f1 generation it is the first filial generation which comes from the crossing over of the two different alleles okay now what happens students if we see here we are going to use the word dominant why we are using the word dominant because from one allele one of the allele the one trait will be dominant and one trait will be recessive okay now how we can take an example over here that it is denoted by capital letter tt okay now how if it is written as t or small t then there is a character of tall and even there is a character of dwarf but this tall will show its character more okay so this will be dominant gene so the plant will be as tall but if we are writing t and t then there will be no dominancy and the plant will become what dwarf so this is how we can recognize the dominant trait okay now next point recessive trait what is recessive trait the trait which does not appear in f1 generation is called as what recessive trait actually this type of combination does not occurs in f1 generation okay the recessive trait means the trait which does not show its character actually what happens students some of the genes do not show their character because some genes are dominant over that genes okay now in my body i have different type of genes but some genes are not showing their characters why because they are recessive and the genes which are showing their characters are what dominant it is denoted by a small letter small t and small t which represent the dwarf condition of a plant okay now next is genotype what is genotype student it is the genetic representation of a trait okay when we represent any kind of trait in a genetic way we write it as a genotype so if we are writing capital t or capital t or capital t small t for a tall plant okay so genotype is what genotype is a character which is represented from the gene of a particular organism okay if we are writing capital t and capital t or capital t and small t then also the plant will be recognized as tall because here we can say that these two genes are dominant even in this the capital t is present over here so this will be dominant over the recessive one okay now next is phenotype what is phenotype it is the expression physical appearance of a trait okay so what happens when we can observe any kind of character 
then we use the word phenotype over there okay so phenotype resembles the physical expression or physical appearance of any kind of plant or an animal okay for an example tall pea plant it can be noted by direct observation of an individual okay we do not need to write capital t and capital t for a tall t plant okay we just see the plant and write the observations over there that it is tall okay so it is showing the physical characteristic of a plant now i want to give an example over here that if you see a person and a person is having blue eyes then blue eyes is just the phenotypic appearance or we can say the phenotype of a person behind it the genes are working over there so these genes which are working over that blue eyes will be the genotype of that individual okay so did you understand the difference between a phenotype and a genotype student phenotype is just the external appearance or we can say the physical appearance which can be visualized by our eyes is known as what phenotype but if we talk about genotype then it is the expression of gene of a particular individual okay students now next is mono hybrid cross now what is mono hybrid cross it involves the study of inheritance of one pair of contrasting characters okay now what we do if we are using one pair of contrasting characters means if we are taking a plant as a tall and even short and we are crossing the characters of it then we consider it as an a category of mono hybrid cross example inheritance of tall and dwarf characters so if we see the tall plant and if we see the dwarf plant then we can observe both type of characters in a particular plant okay now next is di hybrid cross so what is di hybrid cross so let us see it is the study of inheritance of two pair of contrasting characters so if we are using one pair of contrasting character then it will be considered as mono hybrid cross if we are seeing the two pairs of contrasting characters then it will be considered under the di hybrid cross now the next one is tri hybrid cross so as the name suggest here it is the study of inheritance of three pairs of contrasting characters so if we are taking three pairs of contrasting characters of any particular plant or animal then it will be considered under the category of tri hybrid cross okay now next is back cross what is back cross the cross between f1 generation with any of the parents is known as what back cross now what we do if we are crossing the individuals characters and then we do the back cross again with the parents then it is considered under the category of back cross okay do not worry about all the terms we are going to explain all the terms in the next upcoming lecture in which i will tell you that how a mono hybrid cross and a di hybrid cross is done okay tri hybrid cross and back cross will be explained to you all in the higher classes and because they are not really important for you all to understand now you will understand when you will learn about the briefly in the genetics in 11th class but in this class student it is important for you all to understand the mono hybrid and the di hybrid cross because in your examination the question will be surely asked from this part okay so please watch the next lecture video carefully if you want to learn about mono hybrid and di hybrid cross okay now next cross is test cross so what is test cross the cross between f1 generation and the recessive parent is known as what test cross if we talk about back cross we are crossing f1 generation with the dominant parent with any of the parent it may be dominant or recessive but if we talk about test cross then we are crossing f1 generation with the recessive parent only we are not including the dominant parent in crossing okay now next is emasculation what is emasculation the removal of anther from a flower for the cross pollination okay now if anthers are present on a flower there are chances that a flower can do self pollination so if we want to stop the self pollination then we will remove the anthers from the flower part which is known as what emasculation if we will remove the anthers from the flower part then what will happen 
the pollen grains from the another flower will come through wind pollination or air pollination and what will happen it will stuck to it and the fertilization will occur okay so to stop the self pollination we remove the anthers of a flower part and this is known as what emasculation remember this thing okay now students there is a very small assignment for you all which is the assignment number 1 in which you have to solve the exercise number 1 and 2 okay there are only some questions okay because i have taught very less in this lecture because i want to make you understand with each and every term which is related to the heredity and evolution please consider all the terminology because it will be very helpful for you all to understand all the other upcoming lectures of this chapter if you will understand terminology then 50% of the chapter is covered with the terminology part as well because sometimes in your examination and even board level examinations the questions can be asked from terminology part as well okay the definitions of gene allele phenotype genotype mono hybrid cross di hybrid cross can be put on in your examination so you should be prepared for that thing now in the next lecture i am going to tell you about that what is mono hybrid cross and di hybrid cross and even we are going to learn about that how the mendel conducted his experiments very carefully okay so students in this lecture we have learned that how is the heredity and evolution is possible what are the variations okay what are the mendel contribution actually mendel has given many laws okay so we are going to discover all the laws in the next upcoming lecture students but you have to be tuned for the next lectures so that you can understand this whole chapter okay this chapter is somewhat theoretical as compared to other chapters but it is very very important for you all because if you want to take the biology subject in 11th or 12th class then it will be important that you should be familiar with all the terms related to genetics as you will not face any kind of problem over there okay genetics is a very very important part of our life even we should have thorough knowledge about this thing that how the genes are being transferred from one parent to another how the heredity is carried on okay how the evolution has taken place on our planet okay what are the changes which we have seen from the millions of years okay what are the things which were primitive what are the things which are advanced and what are the things which will come up in our world in the advancement way okay so all these things are really important to understand because this is a very very good chapter and from this chapter i am making you sure this thing that the questions will be arise from the crossing part the mono hybrid cross di hybrid cross okay so it is very very important that you should be having thorough knowledge about all these thing and they are very easy to solve okay if i give you any kind of characters of any plant and animal you can solve the mono hybrid cross in within seconds so i will tell you all the tricks as well to remember all the things so students please give me the permission to leave thank you okay